Now is the time for our prayer concerns and celebrations. And I, I want to let you know that, that Barbara uh, has been in the hospital, if you haven't heard that, but she is back home now and doing well. So she's making a really good recovery with a stent. They were afraid a bit that it had to be open heart surgery, but it's a stent and she's doing good and well. Uh, T Tony is here and did, he was there with her in the hospital. And anyway, we're, we're glad she is, she is doing well. I want to let you know Patricia Sign is, is not across the street right now. She's in Madison Manor and has a cracked vertebrae. So please be in prayer for her. She's in a lot of pain. So needs our prayers a lot right now. So, so we hold up, hold up Patricia for you for that. Now, let us be in an attitude of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for this day. We give you thanks for the joy of gathering together. We give you thanks for this church family and the way that we uphold one another. We give you thanks for our own families and all the love that we have learned. We give you thanks for all the ways that your love has made its way into our lives. Lord, we hold up to you today for, for your caring and your strengthening. Barbara, Linda, Patricia, Frida, Brad, Chuck, and Carol, David, Luke, and Anne. We lift up to all those names that were not lifted aloud, but Lord, you know the concerns of our hearts and those things that we are in need of. Lord, we lift up to you our country for peace and that we might find a way to, to find grace and love for those who, who disagree. We hold up our world, all the places where, where COVID is, is still causing such challenges and, and pain and loss for all those who are mourning and picking up pieces in India and other places in the world. We, we hold them up for your care. Lord, we ask all these things in your Son's name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass.
Mark's gospel journeying along, and we are in the fourth chapter. If you wish to look it up in your pew Bibles or at home, it, it is at Mark 4, verse 26 to 34. Uh, just to give you a, a, a little word about where this is in Mark's gospel, to start in the fourth chapter, Jesus is given the parable of the sower, which is also the parable of all the different souls that the sower cast upon. So this is a, a, a chapter of parables, rather agrarian. And, and, he, and he tells them the, like the, the interpretation of that, of that parable within that, uh, that chapter as well. And then we go on, and these are more, more parables for us. And I'll be reading out of the CEB this week instead of the NIV. Although there's one word I kind of I may have to insert, insert a little NIV in for. But hear now the word. <clears throat> then Jesus said, this is what the king, God's kingdom is like. It's as though someone scatters seed on the ground, then sleeps and wakes night and day. The seed sprouts and grows, but the farmer does not know how. The earth produces crops all by itself. First the stalk, then the head, then the full grain, head of grain. Whenever the crop is ready, the farmer goes out and cuts the grain because it's harvest time. He continues, what's a good image for God's kingdom? What parable can I use to explain it? Consider a mustard seed. When scattered on the ground, it's the smallest of all seeds on the earth, but when it's planted, it grows and becomes the largest of all vegetable plants. See, that's where I like, I think I'm a shrub. Largest of all shrubs, but vegetable plants. It produces such large branches that the birds of the sky are able to nest in its shade. With many such parables, he continued to give them the word as much as they were able to hear. He spoke to them only in parables then explained everything to his disciples when he was alone with them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable unto you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Jesus told parables of things that people had some connection to. Now, he would put a twist on things, but, but he, he would tell stories that people would have some understanding of, of shepherding, of losing a coin, of family challenges, of somebody running off, of, of difficult situations, of dishonest managers, but, but of situations that made sense to the people that were living there. Now, I reckon most of you probably know something about putting seed down and seeing it sprout up. Although, I will say, as a whole, the, uh, the, the people of the world today have less connection to that than they did in Jesus' time. There, there are certainly places where, where people believe that food comes from the grocery store, and rightly so, because it's all they've ever seen. So this isn't necessarily a connection. So if you have a good connection with planting seeds and seeing them grow, you have a bit of an advantage into what, how Jesus is using this language. Now, I think if Jesus were to be here today and give us parables, I think he would give parables on the things that people commonly connect to. Do not worry about how many likes your Instagram post gets. Think about how many likes you have from your Father in Heaven. Okay, probably. That's, that's too cheeky. We wouldn't do that one so much. Uh, uh, the kingdom of God is like when you need to search something, you really need to find an answer, and you type into the search, and you get only one result, and it's exactly what you need. You don't have to spend searching time searching for more. Or, or maybe it would be something like, you know like when you're driving and you see a cat trying to cross the road and it's almost all the way there and it sees you when it goes all the way back and dangering it's like, why doesn't it just go across the road? You know, when we 
have harsh things coming at us, and it's frightening and scary, how come we're kind of likely to go back to the place we've been sort of trying to go away from and fall back into old bad habits rather than forging the way, the rest of the way across the road? <clears throat> now, I'm sure if Jesus were here today, he would do much better parables than those. But I think they would be about things we understood and were familiar to us. Jesus, to this, to the time he lived, spoke to folks and things they understood. Planting, growing. The, the, the man in this parable goes forth and scatters seed. Now, it, it, it's important to note this differentiation of the verb. He's scattering seed. That parable of the sower I mentioned before, they were sowing seeds there, and it's a different word in the, in the Greek. And that sowing seed is sort of the professional way of sowing those seeds, of getting them planted versus just throwing them out all willy-nilly, just scattering them. And the sower in that parable was identified with God, so maybe we could think the scatterer is a little closer to our level. Or maybe it's even more to think of it, it's not the professional person on this side that it's talking to, but everyone who's listening. You all are scatterers of seed. So you scatter out the seed, and he and he goes to sleep and doesn't do any work to it, just scatters it, and the seed sprouts and comes up. And really the emphasis of this, uh, of this parable is on he doesn't know how that happens. Now maybe you are very learned in the horticultural sciences, and it doesn't seem like so much of a, of a mystery to you, but I'll say my dad, who's quite the horticulturalist, was an extension agent for years and years and years and still grows and sells at the farmer market quite avidly. I talked to him about this, this, this parable this week, and, and he said, for me, every time those seeds come forth, it feels a little bit like a miracle happening, a small miracle that these seeds will transformed into something so entirely different. A new light sprouts <clears throat> forth. And this, this man who has scattered these seeds doesn't really have much more work in the job, it says, until harvest time comes, when the earth has produced from itself and all the work that has done. Then it's time to harvest and have more action. Maybe this parable is telling us, as God was the sower before in the parable, that we are to scatter seeds of gospel, of grace, of love, of compassion. And maybe we don't know if it'll make any difference or not. There was a a youth at my first church, and, and I gotta say, I mean, as a typical person of like 12 to 14 while I was there, I don't know that he was paying that much attention when I was preaching, or at least I didn't get necessarily the sense that he was. I was a good kid, very funny, always joking around with everybody, but, but I gotta tell you, I, I didn't think I'd make any difference whatsoever, and, and I got a call from him years later as a, as a young adult going through stuff and contact me through Facebook and talk to him on the phone and going through and, and he thought of me as this pastor in his mind from his youth and, and I had no idea I had made that kind of impact on him. You don't really know what seeds are being sown and what root they might take. Being kind and gracious to someone, not because they deserve it, or because you think they had a real tough story and they should be in a bad strait, or, or just you know because you particularly understand them or like them, but showing compassion and kindness to someone just because 
they're a fellow child of God, can make a difference. For people who feel like they don't fit in to come into a church like this or a church like, like any other, that wouldn't feel like they would be in place or in part here. Showing kindness and connection to folks. That can take root. That can grow into something more. The next parable is of this mustard. The tiniest of all seeds, although my dad, the horticulturalist, will tell me it's technically not the tiniest seed. He has to tell me those technicalities. But it is a small seed that grows into something large. Although, really, if he had picked something that grew even larger, maybe a cedar from a small seed becomes huge and great. And in fact, that is an image that is used in the Bible. The mighty cedars of Lebanon are held up as this great, mighty, wondrous thing versus a shrub. Even if it is the mightiest of vegetable plants, it's still a shrub. shrub. The, the mustard plant wasn't really so great and high and held up. It was kind of scrub brush that would just could volunteer to grow up in that area. It wasn't this wondrous plant. Yet this is what he compares the kingdom of God to. I would think that might sound a bit surprising to the folks at that time. The kingdom of God is like a mustard bush, Rob? I don't know. That doesn't seem so great and holy and wondrous. But I think in the description that comes after that, we get the holy, wondrous part. It's a shrub with many branches. And the birds of the air can find shade and a place to nest. Because that's what we're trying to grow. Is a place where, where, where the ones who are in the air and have no grounding in a place that's firm and stable in their life can come home to roost, to have a place that's stable and safe. I mean, you, you walked down a sidewalk or something like that and seen a little bird scutter off into a bush for safety, to, for the protection and solace that, that it offers. And, and that's, that's who we've agreed to be in this church. That's, that's what we say when we come in. And we say that all child, that, that everyone is here, a child of God, regardless of sexual orientation or gender identity or or addiction status or, or mental illness, regardless of anything, there is a place for you to shelter, to find safety, to be at a place where you can be loved for who you are. That's what the image that we're giving here, not great and mighty and glorious and wonderful and everybody, oh, that church is just the best. Uh, the talk of the town, no. It's a place that's offering shelter. Now, I think, I think we do a great job when folks come to this church to offer that shelter. But I don't think it's just talking about this building. It's in the world, in your actions, in your connections with people. Are you offering a place of safety and security? A place of acceptance, not because they deserve it, but because they're God's child. It's a challenge for us. But the good part is, we can grow. All these images are about growth and change and transformation, really, at their root. And God's seeds of gospel are spread out liberally. They are here for your spirit you might grow in your ability to have compassion with folks you don't understand at home, ideas that seem so foreign and crazy to you, for, for folks that are making choices that are so obviously wrong, surely they can see that, for folks that are just coming at things from an entirely different place that you really can't understand. You don't have to understand. 
not called, that we'll know that we're Christians by how well we understand everyone. We're Christians by how well we love everyone. And if we make ourselves fertile ground for those seeds of the gospel to grow, what mysterious and miraculous growth can happen. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we are open before you. You know us fully. You know the things that we have done that we ought not to have done or the things that we have left undone that we ought to have. You know our weaknesses. You know the wounds that have led us to those weaknesses. Lord, you know us fully. And yet you love us completely. Lord, in silence, we lift to you all those things undone or done that have fallen short of your great calling to love. We hold up to you our, our wounds and our pains that need your healing. We hold them to you that you might shower us with your love and growth. Imagine the very breath that is coming into your body is the Spirit of God. It's cleansing you, renewing you, recreating you in God's image. Christ, you are forgiven and made new. In the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and made new. Thanks be to Go forth.